Hello friends, welcome back with part 2 of World War 1 1915 by Epic History TV. So, I'm gonna start my recording before we talk about it. Okay. Okay, it's still zero though. Uh, okay, there we go. So, last video, I asked you guys, was Winston Churchill part of the... Uh, uh, what you call that? I forgot which. Hold on. The G Gallipoli landings. And thank you for Akivech again. Thank you very much. Um, Winston Churchill was the first Lord of Admi Admiralty. The first Lord of Admiralty was a very powerful in determining naval strategy and des des decisions on what the Navy builds and buys. Churchill was the person that came up with the idea for the Gallipoli landings and the operation is the Dardanelles region in his position as First Lord of the Admiralty. But when the operation was a costly failure, he was demoted noted and then resigned his government posting shortly after. Churchill was later appointed to a second term as First Lord of Admiralty during World War II in September 1939, but he only served that post until May of 1940 when he, he became the Prime Minister of the UK. So you saw the Lusitania was a British ship, yeah this is the Lusitania, but when it was sunk a significant number of Americans were killed. This video does not note that there were was outrage in the US about Lusitania but does not go into much detail and does not note that President Wilson had a vision of himself as a great peacemaker and savior of the civilized world. I heard about this and um, if you don't know go check out this guy over here um, logging through history he has uh, that he actually influenced me to start like um, this reaction to history and try learning history because when I saw his videos um, it's amazing and you you guys would probably love watching some some of his uh, reaction videos so yeah and I heard about Winston Church I mean Winston Churchill um, Woodrow Wilson so yeah you, you guys should probably check that out so yeah um I give Vetch actually um, <clears throat> recommended me uh, to do an alternate history scenarios are always much more fun the about the election that ruined everything on a channel called Alton History Hub. I heard about that and I would probably do that. And for William Branch, the first year was so much fun. Let's do more. Yes, Europe that award is a pronounced, I still can't pronounce that. I'm very, very sorry. Zeppelin was a fictional adventure movie about just that. There is a clip about revealing one to a British double agent. Neat. Okay. Oh, this. Okay, so. Adding, Churchill got redemption by volunteering for the British Army in the trenches. Mm. And having fought bravely there, he was fear fearless from his youth, already a war hero in three years, even before entering three wars, even before entering politics, as he was appointed Minister of Supply before the end of the Great War. While still First Lord, he promoted naval aviation and invented the initial idea of the tank, which was greatly modified before it put into use. Okay, so now this is part two of our of our uh, 1915, and yeah, last video for some reason there were technical problems, so I hope no technical problems here, so that will be just clear, smooth. Anyway, let's go. Hold on. Oh, I'm checking my volume first because it's important to check your volume. I gotta go for 80. Yeah. Of the first aircraft with a machine gun able to fire forward through its propeller, thanks mm. to a new invention known as interrupter gear. Mm. Allied aircraft losses mount rapidly. In what? Yeah, there, uh, a well-known uh, pilot in World War One was uh, the Red Baron. Yes, I heard about the Red Baron and I, I found a video about the Red Baron and I would probably react to that in the future. What becomes known as the Fokker Scourge. Oh, Italy enters the war. Okay, now Italy enters the war. Um, there was a, a secret meeting that was, uh, I, I don't know who was it there, but there was a secret meeting 
meeting between the ally, allies, um, the Entente with Italy, and that's where where they negotiated Italy to join. And I hope he he uh, tells more details about this uh, Italy entered the war, and because there's going to be um, a tw our a front where they fought in the same place the 12 battles of the Isonzo we we actually re uh, reacted to that video um, about 12 battles of Isonzo um, this this is the link you can, there's like a pop-up like I hope there's like a pop-up and yeah I heard you guys have to watch that because um, it's interesting I know yeah it's pretty underrated that's for sure. Italy, swayed by British and French promises of territorial gains at Austria-Hungary's expense, joins the Allies, declaring war on Austria-Hungary and later the Ottoman Empire and Germany. The Italian army makes its first assault against Austro-Hungarian positions along the Isonzo River. The first battle of Isonzo, 23rd June 1915. The reason why um, Italy joined the Allies because the treaty that was, I mean, the alliance that was signed between um, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy was a defensive alliance. So, um, from the start of the war, uh, Austria was the was started has start, started the offensive, not not the Allies. So, yeah, he, they're not going to join. They, they actually and announced their neutrality but just some negotiate negotiation boom they're in the ally side but is repulsed with heavy losses meanwhile the allies face a crisis on the eastern front okay the russians have begun a general retreat abandoning poland german troops enter warsaw, warsaw. on the 5th of august Tsar Nicholas II dismisses the Russian army's commander-in-chief, Grand Duke Nicholas, and takes personal command. And that's a mistake that he made. Um, for, cause for him, cause inside, in this time period, uh, Russia is, in its borders, has having conflict. Uh, there's a Russian revolution, and, and yeah. And the reason why um, Nicholas II, Tsar Nicholas II, um, became like um, appointed himself to command the armies because he, for me he thought what he thought if he changed the war and tr tried pushing the Germans back, the people would probably be happy because um, you, you know because of the conflicts that's happening and and um revolution uh, but the problem was he doesn't have any experience in the battlefield and they got pushed back more and what happened was the germans uh, br brought uh, sent uh, vladimir lenin to russia and yeah to overthrow the czar and that's where russia actually um uh, what you call that? What word? Um, uh, surrendered? Not really. Yeah, I, I don't know what word. I'm very, very sorry. It's been a while since I recorded. It will prove disastrous for the Tsar as he becomes more and more closely tied to Russian military defeat. At Gallipoli, the Allies land reinforcements at Suvla Bay. But neither they, nor a series of fresh attacks by the Anzacs, can break the deadlock. Conditions for both sides are terrible. My Troops God. are tormented not only by the enemy, but by heat, flies and sickness. Oh. In the Atlantic, a German U-boat sinks the liner SS Arabic. Oh. 44 are lost, including three Americans. Again. In response to further U.S. warnings, Germany ends all attacks on passenger ships. Mid-autumn Okay. 
On the Western Front, the Allies mount their biggest offensive of the war so far, designed to smash through the front and take pressure off their beleaguered Russian ally. The French attack in the Third Battle of Artois and Second Battle of Champagne. The British, with the help of poison gas, attack at loss. Despite initial gains, the attacks soon get bogged down, with enormous losses on all sides. Oh my God. Oh, wow. 192,000 French casualties, 147,000 German casualties, 57,000 British casualties. My God. Wow, this is like a, a war zone. It's obviously a war zone, what the hell? This is ma dead man's land. No man's land. Allied troops land at Salonika in Greece to open a new front against the Central Powers and bring aid to Serbia. But the Allies are too late. Bulgaria joins the Central Powers. There we go. And their joint offensive overruns Serbia in two months. That winter, the remnants of the Serbian army escape through the Albanian mountains. Yeah. And I don't know why, um, for Austria Hungary, to to beat Serbia, they they have to wait for Bulgaria to join. Like, my God, that's that's humiliating. Because they started a war, they they declared war on um, uh, Serbia, but eh. Their losses are horrific. By the end of the war, a third of Serbia's army has been killed. Oh. The highest proportion of any nation. Fierce fighting continues on the Italian front, as Italian troops launch the third and fourth battles of the Isonzo. Austro-Hungarian forces, though outnumbered, are dug in on the high ground, and impossible to dislodge. The, um, the the Italian front uh, for the Austrian for the Austrian Austrias Austrians um, were kind of a success for them to because they're successfully pushing back Italy and at the same time you know the general that was a commander general I, I don't know oh my God I'm not really good at um, the rankings of of like people in this war but uh, yeah they just started like offensive offensive like and uh, like attack attack like counter attack mm. in the Middle East a British oh. advance on Baghdad is blocked by Turkish forces at the Battle of Tessifon 25 miles south of the city the British withdraw to Kut where they are besieged The Allies abandon the Gallipoli campaign. 83,000 troops are secretly evacuated without alerting Turkish forces. Not a man is lost. It's one of the best executed plans of the war. The but still Winston Churchill was demoted. Campaign has cost both sides a quarter of a million casualties. 1915 is a bad year for the Allies. Yeah. Enormous losses for no tangible gains. But there is no talk of peace. Instead, all sides prepare for even bigger offensives in 1916, with new tactics developed from earlier failures. All sides still believe a decisive battlefield victory is within grasp. There we go. Hold on a minute. 1916. I know this is this one was short, but still, it was a fantastic episode. It, we're ending because the reason why I, I went to the World War One all parts because um, in the video, the original video, the what you call that. Um, the World War I 1915 original video was actually age-restrictive and I, I couldn't 
I couldn't watch because uh, I'm still that young. Anyway, uh, is this still playing? Stop. No. There we go. I ended the video. Guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you next video in year 1916. Goodbye. Oh yeah, by the way, comment down below any details. Because I don't know much about what happened in World War I. So yeah, I'm still learning. Goodbye.